Hey, hello Facebook. Hello Facebook. <laughs> hello Melita. How are you Dallas? <laughs> good, good. Uh, Melita from Emojo. Um, I'm joined today by Dallas Fletcher from Body Fabulous Fitness. Uh, we're in the beautiful Roma Street Parklands here in Brisbane um, and we're today going to be talking to you guys all about abdominal separation. We are. So um, Dallas is very kindly going to take us through what it is, um, how you can test for it, um, and also some simple do's and don'ts. So if this is something that you are living with, there are you know some simple do's and some simple don'ts. Um, if you have questions while we're going through, feel free to um, type them in. Yep, post them um, below or type below. them in. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's kick it off. Um, I guess to start with, what is abdominal separation? Tell so us. abdominal separation or diastasis recti or DR, as a lot of you might have heard, has to happen. So during pregnancy, your abdominals need to separate to allow for room basically for your baby to grow. So if you've been pregnant, everyone has had abdominal separation. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about what you do during and after pregnancy to ensure that that separation, you know, isn't, doesn't become excessive. Mm, sure. So how, you know, we've had a baby, mm -hmm. how do we test um, if, if we have DR? Sure, well we can do that now. So the best time to test is actually at least 10 weeks post-pregnancy. Okay. Um, newly post-pregnant, you're definitely going to be very separated, but sure. if you, 10 weeks post-pregnancy, you get a good indicator of where you're at. Okay. So if you just want to lie down, Melita. Sure. And we can um, check. So Melita's going to lie down, and what she's going to do is like a little, just raise her shoulders up off the ground. Mm -hmm. So she's going to come up, and I'm going to work my fingers down the middle here. So what I'm actually, just breathe while you're holding up there. <laughs> what I'm actually feeling for is not just the separation. So a lot of people say two finger, three finger gap. I'm feeling actually for the fascia underneath and how how that feels. So you're pretty good actually. Oh, cool. You're probably down to... That's nice. How many weeks post are you? <laughs> weeks? <laughs> <laughs> how many months? 11 oh, months. Well, that's good. And that's all. So what I want Melita as well to do is make sure when she gets up, you're going to roll to your side yep. and come up that way yep. and that is the first thing that's going to help you avoid excessive abdominal separation so any sort of crunching movement yeah is not good so, so that's what, one of the big yeah. don'ts so what i was feeling for was basically down here through what we call your linear, linear alba mm -hmm. is which you might have seen that line mm. during pregnancy is the feeling of the muscle or the fascia underneath See, sometimes it's two fingers, sometimes it's three finger. If it's sort of three and a half, four, mm. definitely go and see a physio. Okay. Um, and you'll you'll have there'll be different separation, upper and lower. Right. Um, and it's not just about the separation; it's also about the strength of that muscle. Right. Underneath. Okay. Yeah. So if we've tested, we've discovered that we do have this. What can we be doing mm -hmm. to help encourage, um, you know, the, the abdominals to to, to heal? To heal. Yeah. yeah. So I guess the first thing is is how you get in and out of bed or how you get up and down and as you saw Melita do that rolling because often I say if you just sit up or do a sit up you might see a little doming on your abdominals or a, mm. or a toblerone yeah. and this can happen during pregnancy and afterwards and that doming is a sign signifier that your abs are not you know meshed back together sure. okay they're still separated they can't activate properly yeah so we've got to avoid that doming so it doesn't damage it further right um, and the healing starts pretty much your abs are top and bottom pelvic floor diaphragm wrapping the abs in the middle so we need to have that strong pelvic floor that mm. you know improved pelvic floor underneath so that's the first place we start okay um, second place is your breath so how you're lifting not holding your breath mm. Um, so that your abdominals are actually working with your diaphragm naturally, so you're breathing your way to a better core. Sure. Um, and the third thing is just avoiding exercises. You know, don't think, oh, the only way I'm getting my belly back is to do crunches, to do sit-ups, to do planks. Yeah. No. Yeah. You want to at least avoid them, I'd say even to 18 months. Right. Post-pregnant. Right, um, so I've got another six months off. Yeah, like that. <laughs> but see, and now's a good time. Melita's nearly 12 months post-pregnant. Yeah. Um, good time around then to go and just get checked by physio. Yeah, sure. They can also do a scan of your belly, mm -hmm. um, an ultrasound, and just see how deep that mm -hmm. muscle separation is. Yeah. And then advise you, yep, yeah, you're okay to go and start doing that, start doing this, um, or no, avoid, you know, jumping up and down yeah. or anything that's going to... Uh, cause that excessive pressure. Okay, great. Hmm. Thank you. That's
that's all right. We missed anything? No, I think that's <laughs> it. Pretty simple. Um, <laughs> if you do have questions about DR or abdominal separation, feel free um, to shoot them through. Um, Dallas is obviously a font of knowledge around this topic. Font of knowledge. Um, font of knowledge. <laughs> well, I'm um, certified at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same thing. Um, we hope you've enjoyed this and um, please let us know if there are other topics that you would like us to cover. Um, really keen to um, hear from you. So, bye for now. Bye for now.